Hello. 22nd place QPR host bottom of the table Rotherham United this Saturday at Loftus Road and is shaping up to be another colossal fixture in QPR's bid for survival. Because a QPR win and either Millwall or Huddersfield dropping points or Stoke City losing will see the R's climb out of the bottom three for the first time since the end of September. This is QPR's sixth opportunity to escape the relegation zone with a win. So the question is, after blowing the fifth opportunity last Wednesday with a gutless 1-0 loss against Stoke City, will they finally do it? I'm Hoopster, I make QPR videos before and after every fixture, so if you enjoy this video please do like and subscribe and let's get straight into it. Unfortunately for fans of the Millers, they have been rooted to the bottom of the table since December. In fact, Rotherham have won just three matches all season, which is five less than their relegation neighbours Sheffield Wednesday and Queen's Park Rangers. They've scored the second lowest number of goals with 29, but it's in fact in defence where their biggest issues lie. With 64 goals conceded, the league's worst by 12. For context, when they were last relegated from the championship in 2021, they conceded 60 goals, meaning they've conceded four more in 13 less games. The sacking of Matt Taylor back in November, who managed to keep the club afloat last season, has done very little to change fortunes. With new manager Liam Richardson winning just one of his 12 matches so far, a 1-0 Boxing Day victory over Borough. That makes it just one win in 21 matches for Rotherham, and after spending four and a half months in the relegation zone, the gap to safety is now as wide as 14 points, meaning their fate is all but sealed. They head to Rangers on the back of five consecutive losses to Ipswich, Hull, Watford, Leeds and Southampton, and they are yet to win a match away from home this season. So this should be an easy win for QPR, right? Well, no, we all know that is not the case. With QPR still in the bottom three themselves, Rotherham will be eyeing this up as a final opportunity to kickstart a run to safety. And there are several reasons why we know this won't be a walk in the park for Rangers. For starters, Rotherham may be rooted to the bottom of the table, but they've not totally given up. On Saturday, they lost 1-0 to Watford. They had 19 shots and only missed out on a draw via a Yasser Asprilla wonder goal. And on Tuesday night, they were just one minute away from taking a draw away at Ipswich Town, having been 3-1 down inside 29 minutes before Amari Hutchinson sealed the three points for the home side at the death. That would have been a bit of a sucker punch to have lost so late, but to have scored three goals for the first time this season will be a big boost of confidence going into this weekend, especially for a team which doesn't have rakes of quality in front of goal. And as I've already said, QPR have already had five opportunities to escape the relegation zone and have not won a single one of those matches. That 1-0 loss to Stoke City last Wednesday was just a perfect example of how we don't turn up for those kind of games. Add in the fact that we haven't beaten Rotherham or Sheffield Wednesday so far this season, lost once to Millwall and lost Andrew to Huddersfield, and you can start to see a bit of a pattern emerging. That pattern is that the teams that play low blocks and tend to put a lot of players behind the ball are the teams that QPR do not enjoy playing this season. Rangers don't like playing these more physical, stodgier teams and find them really hard to break down. And the fact we went on to beat a more attacking and informed Bristol City on Saturday after failing to turn up at Stoke just three days before is another bit of evidence towards this theory. And there are unfortunately other damning stats for QPR, like the fact that we've beaten Rotherham just once in our past seven league appearances against them, and our last win against them at all went to penalties in the FA Cup in 2022. Then there's the fact that nine of Rotherham's 29 goals so far this season have come from set pieces, a delightful thing to have in your arsenal against a QPR side that is chronically allergic to defending set pieces. I could go on here, but you get the picture. This could very easily be another pitfall for QPR. And that's why Marty Cifuentes and the team have a huge task on their hands this weekend, because they must find a way of breaking down this team, especially because the March fixture list does not offer much respite. We can't underestimate a team that at this point has very little to lose. A draw is no good to Rotherham at this point, so they will try to attack us just like they did to Watford and Ipswich over the last week. But knowing the gravity of this game for us too, I would still expect them to park the bus in spells when needed and make them as hard as possible for us to break down, just like they were able to do at the New York Stadium in Marty Cifuentes' first match in charge, a one-all draw that ended Rotherham's six-game losing streak at the time. Ignore the fact that they lost to Ipswich, 
The fact that they battled back from 3-1 down shows that this isn't a team that is totally on the beach. So we can't be too relaxed going into this. I would imagine that means that work experience right back Jimmy Dunn will be keeping his place in the team to add that extra bit of steel at the back. And Lucas Anderson should be the first name on the team sheet after his craftsmanship in midfield against Bristol City on Saturday. Hopefully Stoke will have been a huge lesson learned because Millwall look to have played their final gambit by sacking Joe Edwards. And if they get a new manager bounce via Neil Harris in the next few games, they might not be around to chase for too much longer. So finally, my prediction. Every time I've backed us in these situations, it's gone against me. So I'm going to go for a frustrating 1-0 loss and pray that my reverse psychology works. Let me know your own predictions in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you on Monday this time for my post-match reaction. Come on, you Oz.